Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to be installing macOS Catalina on the 2018 MacBook Air. So let's go ahead and talk about how to install it and get to installing it. Alright guys, so the first thing you want to do is a little bit of prep before we actually install the new software. So the first thing you always, always, always want to make sure that you have a latest backup of your computer. And the easiest way to do that is, of course, use Time Machine. So if you already have your Time Machine, just be sure you go ahead and click the Backup Now. Or if you have not yet set it up, all you need is some sort of external hard drive. Make sure it has enough room. For example, mine is 500 gigabytes. But basically, this will allow your Mac to back up automatically. It's a really great thing to have, but chances are most of you that are watching probably already have this thing set up. So just be sure that you get a nice, fresh backup just in case something goes wrong during the installation. So the next thing you want to do is make sure you have plenty of room for this installation to take place. Now Apple actually says that you need 20 gigabytes of free storage for this update to take place. Now the actual download itself is 8 gigabytes, but I imagine some other things happen and during the installation it's going to require more. So just be sure that your computer has plenty of available hard disk space. All right, so this is a really, 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 really important one here. You need to check that your applications are going to be compatible with Catalina. So the way to do this is to check for 64-bit applications because if you have any 32-bit ones, they are not going to work at all. They are completely uh, killing the 32-bit support only 64-bit apps are going to work on this update so you can actually check for that if you go to the apple logo up here and you hold down your option key you're going to get a system information thing pop up right here so you can go ahead and click on that and you're going to get this window pop up that is going to tell you everything about your computer i mean literally everything it's actually pretty interesting to go through this and look at everything from time to time. But what you want to do is over here on the side, you want to scroll all the way down to the bottom where you see a software drop down. And if it's not drop down, of course, just click this little arrow right here and it'll drop it down for you. But you want to click on applications. And when you click on applications, it's going to take a moment, but it's going to populate a list of every single application installed on your computer. So just give it a moment here. As you can see, it gives you a application name as well as a version of the app where it's obtained from when it was last modified. And then over here on the far right is what we are looking for. It says 64-bit Intel. Now, if you are looking at this list and you see anything that says no, so for example, uh, some of these older Adobe programs that I have, such as Photoshop Elements 9, is a non-32-bit application. So that means when I install uh, Catalina, I'm not going to be able to use Photoshop Elements 9 anymore. Anything that says no. So if you're going through this list and you see an application that you use frequently and it says no, then you either need to find an alternative or see if you can update to a latest version of that app so you'll be able to use it. Another popular 32-bit uh, application that I can think of would be like Microsoft Office 2011. That was a 32-bit, so if you still use uh, Office 2011, that's not going to work. I've seen people say that older versions of uh, some Adobe programs, like I just showed you Elements 9, uh, even more latest versions like Photoshop CS6, that one isn't working properly. And Adobe actually put out today that uh, they're saying do not update to Catalina if you are still on CS6. 
And then also, I've seen stuff um, saying that like DJs who used iTunes uh, are not being able to access their stuff anymore because it used an Excel, an XML file. So you just need to keep in mind, and you really need to, I guess, research that everything you use on a daily basis is going to work with this latest version. Now, in the future, of course, I'm sure. You know that they're gonna work out everything they're gonna get these apps working again but for now some of you may want to hold off on this update like I said just update your own risk but I should be fine so let's go ahead and begin this process all right so there's two ways we can actually download the installer that's gonna allow us to upgrade our Mac OS and the first way and the easiest way is if you're on a computer that is running Mojave then you know that your software updates are all done through your system preferences there's a software update button here so you can just click on that it'll check for updates and you will see that 10.15 Catalina will appear in your software update and there we go there is macOS Catalina and then we can just go ahead and click on the upgrade now button now if you're on a computer that is not up to date to Mojave you can still go into the App Store and when you go into the App Store you should see somewhere on the home page Catalina so here it is right here so you can just of course download it uh, like you did previous versions from the Mac App Store as well but for the purpose of this video we're just going to be doing it here from the software update so all you want to do is click on the upgrade now button and when you click on that button it is going to download the installer so as you can see this is just a little bit over 8 gigabytes so this is going to take a while depending on uh, your internet speed and Apple servers of course so I will come back whenever this decides to get done all right so it is finally finished uh, downloading the installer so this is what opens up when it gets done simple installation wizard like we've always seen with operating systems so let's go ahead and hit continue all right hit agree to the terms and you click agree and it says that it'll be installed on your Macintosh HD. That's what we want. So click install. And you will get a warning that says a list of applications that will not be able to be used. So like I said earlier, I know that my Photoshop Elements is not going to be able to be used. So it does give you a little warning there. So that's good to know. Uh, but you can go ahead and hit continue if you want to do it anyways. And then we can just do uh, touch ID or enter your password to begin the installation. All right, so it's going to install here and I'll come back whenever it decides to get done. All right, so it's finished installing and the computer is going to go ahead and restart for us. But I'm going to go ahead and click restart. And at this point, it's just going to be another waiting game. Uh, it's going to go through the update and everything. And then whenever I come back, it should be all installed and ready to go. So it looks like it's closing things here and preparing to restart. Okay, there it goes. And I imagine we will have the typical Apple loading screens for software updates. All right guys, so we're just gonna go through a bunch of loading screens and all that while it installs. So I will come back and we'll probably have to do a little bit of setup and stuff, but yeah, we're gonna let this install and I'll be back here in a minute. All right guys, we finally got it done here and we are here on the lock screen. Looks like it wants my password. All right, so it's telling us about the new Find My feature. So we now have the Find My app on the Mac now. So it's wanting our permission to uh, do that. So you hit continue. OK, 
Okay, well, the find of my got frozen. So I had to force restart and it just took me straight to the desktop. So I don't know like what the other set of questions even were. Hopefully that's not a bad sign uh, for this update. Uh, but anyways, here we are on the desktop. You can see there's the new Apple TV podcast and you can see Photoshop is no longer gonna open. Also have this relocated items folder. Not sure what that's all about. But yeah, we're here in Catalina. I guess the install went pretty successful, so there'll be lots of videos coming up soon on this new update, letting you know all the new features, some of my favorite things, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of that. Anyways guys, thank you all for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next one.